Hi everyone, Norman here. Today's video is all about the secret truth about knitting neither edges. In front of me is a little swatch in stock knit stitch. Nice tension, even stitches, but otherwise nothing special, right? But if we zoom in a bit, you might notice that this edge here is quite a bit looser than this one. Just compare the length of these legs with these legs here. These here are almost a third longer. And this problem has been haunting me forever. And I can't even begin to tell you how often I looked at my projects and I was like, why are things so uneven? Or how often I received this exact question. Norman, why are my edges not symmetrical? And so far, my only response has been, I don't know. I really don't know. But yesterday, while shooting a different video, I had a true eureka moment moment and I finally truly understand why these edges can't be symmetrical. So watch this. So here is another swatch with a slip stitch border but this time in garter stitch. And can you, let's fold this like this. Uh, can you spot a meaningful difference? Well, I certainly can't. Here is another swatch, but this time I used combination knitting. And can you spot a difference other than that this DK yarn is really not all that suitable for it? Well, here it appears to be the left side here that is quite a bit looser than the right side. Now, isn't this interesting? With all of these three swatches, I did the exact same thing. I slipped the first stitch of every row. I mean, I slipped them differently because they're different knitting stitch patterns, but I did slip them. So why on earth would there be a difference? Now buckle up and fasten your seat belts for I am to show you why exactly your edges are so uneven. And this will explain so, so many other issues concerning imbalances in your fabric, especially between the knit and the purl side. So listen. So whenever an English or continental knitter enters a knit stitch, you do so from left to right, from left to right. Your stitch is sitting on the needle at an angle. It's not flat, but slightly twisted. And your working needle is here on the right side. As a result, you have to reach around with every knit stitch you form. You kind of extend it here a little bit to the side. You have to reach around so much to a point where I have a lot of beginners commenting, why do you say from left to right? Isn't it from right to left? I mean, it appears to be as if you enter from right to left. Of course, it's from left to right. So why does this matter? Every time you enter a stitch, you extend it to the side and this means you are stealing yarn from the adjacent stitches. Now the next stitch here is secured by the barrel of your knitting needle. So when I extend this stitch, it can only steal yarn here from this stitch one row below. So every time you knit a stitch, you extend it and you steal yarn from the adjacent stitch. Now what happens when you knit the next stitch? Currently this stitch here, one row below, you can see this is, it's quite big. As I knit the next stitch, I steal all that yarn here and move it over to this stitch. And with every stitch I make, I move that little bit of slack over to the side. A little bit like a conveyor belt. As a result, you will end up carrying all that slack here over to the last stitch. But once you hit that edge, well, there is no further place to carry the yarn. And you can see, I mean, I was exaggerating here, but do you see how big this loop is? And all that slack gets dumped here into the last stitch, one row below. Here, this stitch here, I can pull tight. This stitch isn't the, the problem. Here, this stitch, one row below is bigger. Now watch closely. We turn around. 
Then I slip the stitch purlwise with yarn in front and this might enlarge in the stitch or not. If it's big, you can pull tight. It really doesn't matter because when you knit the next stitch here, when you knit the next stitch, if I pull here on this loop, I can affect, I can only affect the size of this stitch. I purl this stitch and no matter how tight I pull, I can only pull tight this stitch. This loop, the big one, is two rows below. Even if I extend this stitch here all the way, I'm not going to affect this stitch here. This loose stitch is gone. It, it, it will stay put. Now you might say, well, thank you, Norman. I finally understand why my edge here is so loose. I would reply, no, you don't yet. Let's take a look at a continental pearl stitch. Again, the stitch here is sitting on the needle at an angle. It is not flat, it is slightly twisted. However, because you need to enter the pearl stitch from right to left, that angle works in your favor. It's sort of, so to speak, open to your advances. So as you purl the stitch, you don't need to extend the purl stitch to the side. You are not doing something like this. You are just entering as it is. And this means, I mean, of course, you need to fit in two needles at the same time. However, you are working here closer to the tip. So there is more room to begin with, which means you don't really extend the purl stitch all that much. It might steal a little bit of yarn, but it can feed here on the little strand here in between the two stitches. It doesn't really need to attack the stitch, uh, stitches on either side. And this means the conveyor belt that carries that slack over to the side when you are knitting knit stitches, it isn't active. So as you hit here, the uh, left side of your fabric, you might notice that you don't even end up extending that stitch very far because there really is no slack you can carry over and this has two effects so first of all first of all again the slack that arrives here at the end of your conveyor belt uh, on the left side is much less it's barely noticeable and here's the problem with the slip stitch border you turn around and you slip one stitch again all that slack here in the stitch one row below is locked because I mean as you knit this first stitch here uh, this stitch here isn't connected to your selvage in a direct line so no matter how hard you extend that stitch and you no matter how hard you pull on that stitch to close that stitch it's not going to affect your selvage it's just going to affect the immediate edge stitch it's a little bit different if you don't slip the first stitch, meaning you create this little, well, knotted edge here that is very suitable for seaming because you knit the first stitch and then as you knit the second stitch, this stitch here is still directly connected to your edge stitch. So as you pull on it, as you extend it, you are actually closing that stitch. In essence, this means you carry over a less slack to begin with and then as you knit the second stitch you steal away the little there is uh, to begin with. So I hope you can see the result. So here on this side you end up with knots that are very very tight and very difficult to enter whereas here on this side everything is so loose that you don't even see knots because they are more like loops. See the difference and that's because uh, it's the same effect. So to sum things up your edges here are uneven because the stitches are sitting on the needle at an angle and this forces you to enter different stitches differently. And this explains why my garter stitch sample didn't have the issue. It's knit stitches all over so my conveyor belt is working in both directions and uh, the edges look exactly the same. But what about my swatch here in combination knitting where everything was exactly opposite? Well, 
that is quite easy to explain as well. So let's slip that very first stitch and now you can see or you might already know in combination knitting the knit stitches are twisted. This means you can enter them or have to enter them through the back loop to end up with balanced stitches. But as you can see the leading leg here is here in the back. And this makes, makes entering these stitches quite easy. As you can see, you don't really need to extend them here over to the side, maybe a little bit, but here again, as I said before, these stitches are open to your advances and uh, you don't need to extend them. And this means your conveyor belt that uh, moves over slack here towards the edge isn't really active. You can enter these stitches quite easily. So this last stitch here won't end up being way too large. On the purl side here, however, you will actually activate this set conveyor belt because in combination knitting, you are wrapping the yarn the other way around. And typically, I mean, this will depend on your technique, but typically as you reach around here again, you need to reach around to grab the yarn. And typically this means you are extending these purl stitches over to the side. And this activates the conveyor belt. So you start carrying over slack over to the side. And this means the edge on this side ends up a little bit looser. Now, very, very important. I won't be able to analyze every technique and style in this video. So I purl like this, but others uh, purl like this. Yet others um, wrap the yarn around their index finger and purl like this and so on. Uh, I have a full video on different purl techniques here on my channel. I link it to you up in here in case you need to need or want to improve things. What's important here is that even for two continental knitters or two English knitters, the results may vary simply because you may, you grab the yarn at a different angle and you may or may not extend the purl stitch over to the side. You might or might not steal yarn from the adjacent stitches and you might or might not carry slack over to the side. Here's the all important question. How do we fix this imbalance? And here's the bad news. I don't actually think you can. Knit and purl stitches are mirror image. So if one is easier to enter automatically, this means the other one is a bit harder. If one goes against the grain, the other goes with the flow. So, and you've seen this with combination knitting and it's the same with Eastern knitting or any other knitting style on this planet I am aware of. Ultimately, it's something you have to live with since both edges are rarely held side by side. I mean, I don't think it matters a lot. If you have a scarf, I mean, do you ever examine both edges like this? I mean, while you're wearing it? I don't think so. Now, if it really bothers you, here are some options. The most obvious option for continental knitters is learning the Norwegian pearl. So the yarn stays in the back, you enter the stitch from right to left, but the needle is behind uh, the working yarn. And then you reach around, grab the yarn, reach back and pull through. This will create a purl stitch. So again, enter, weave, do this little dance. And as you can see, here as you perform the Norwegian purl stitch, you are extending or overextending the stitch one row below. And this means your conveyor belt that carries slack over here to the side is active again. Now, I don't want to get your spirits all that high because in reality, the Norwegian pearl will typically, because you need to reach all the way around. This means the Norwegian pearl will typically, will typically 
carry more slack over to this side than the standard continental knit stitch. So as a result, you may or may not uh, end up with imbalances as well. Just in this case, this, um, this side might be yet looser than the other side. Now changing your knitting style on a whim is probably not very easy, setting aside that I actually don't believe it will really solve the problem for you. So instead, before you knit a very important project, say an intricate lace shawl or so, I rather recommend knitting a little swatch. Uh, cast on six stitches, seven stitches, eight stitches uh, in the knitting stitch pattern you want to knit your project in and then toy around. You can slip that first stitch with yarn held in back, pro wise, knit wise, and you can do it twisted. You can do the exact same with yarn held in front, so you can slip uh, pro wise with yarn held in front, knit wise, or twist it. Then in the next row as you uh, need to knit across, you can of course knit, you can purl across, you can knit the stitch through the back loop or purl it through your back loop. And this gives you, I don't know how many permutations, 32, 64 permutations, a lot. And basically what you need to do is you need to knit a very, very long swatch and then see what works for you. Now I'm going to try to create a little overlay here on the side where I can show you all the permutations for a standard slip stitch uh, edge for stockinet stitch, but do know that there are three times as many permutations. And then go through all these variations. That's a lot of work, of course, but you are trying to find a solution that works for you, your tension and your knitting style. And I won't be able to tell you that and nobody else will be able to tell you that either because it really depends on how much slack you carry over with each stitch and how you knit this last stitch, how much force you uh, exert on this last or first stitch, all these tiny little bits will influence uh, uh, your selvage and uh, only a swatch will be a very, very long swatch, well, almost like a belt or so, uh, will be the answer. But again, I do feel that there are certain limitations of hand knitting you have to accept. And this is just one of them. A painting isn't symmetrical either, yet you may call it a masterpiece. And when it comes to knitting, I do feel that the most important part is consistency. I have a video here on YouTube where I show you 10, well, actually more than 10 different edge stitches. I link it uh, to you up in here. Practice them and choose them wisely. But don't try to force knitting into something that is not. Typically that really does not lead to consistent results. Anyway, I hope I was able to shed some light on this very common issue. Like this video if you enjoy watching, comment with your questions and become a patron to support my work. You will find the link to my patron account in the description below. Help me create more videos like this one. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.